Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, it's the new year, so it seems like a great time to optimize your Mac system for music production. And in the last couple of weeks, I've received so many emails asking the same exact question, so I knew I should tackle this in the new year. Should you use an external hard drive for saving your Logic projects or anything else related to your music production? And if so, what hard drive should you get? What's the best specs? So on and so forth. And we're going to dig right into this. Oftentimes, it's recommended by a variety of different websites and even myself included to use an external hard drive when saving your Logic projects and running your Logic projects off of. And why is this the case? Well, your Mac system is doing a whole lot, both, you know, right what you can see and also behind the scenes. That is from running the operating system to the different applications and software you have on your Mac to the plugins that you have in your projects to managing the heating and cooling of the system. And if we take a look in the taskbar here, I have a variety of different apps open all the time, such as Dropbox, Alfred, ScreenFlow, Carbon Copy Cloner. I mean, it goes on and on. There's so much going on. And then to save your Logic projects to the internal drive that's inside your Mac means that your Mac not only has to do all of this stuff, but it also has to read any information in your audio projects. So you have audio recorded, MIDI information. It's reading that information to know to play that audio back to you. And also it's writing to the disc anytime that you're recording any type of audio or any information for that matter. So it's just doing so much. And this can result in slowdown depending on your system. Can run into hiccups like system overload. And really, you're just going to get a better experience altogether if you have a separate external hard drive so that the internal drive is running the operating system, the apps, the plugins, and the external hard drive is where you're opening your projects from and recording to and saving to. But of course, it's not just that simple. There are a variety of different reasons why you might use an external hard drive. And I'm going to dump them into three different buckets. Number one, is this a hard drive that you're going to be working from consistently day to day? So you're saving your projects and other things to this drive and you need to access them consistently. Or are you planning on using this hard drive for backing up your Mac system? So using Time Machine to save the entire contents of your Mac to an external hard drive. Or the third bucket is, are you using an external hard drive for archiving your Logic Projects Final Cut or anything else? It's something that you don't plan on accessing in the near future because these projects are complete, but you do want to have immediate access if you need to access anything within those projects or anything else. For number one, the consistent day-to-day -day access to projects that you're working on consistently or files that you're using all the time, do you have to use an external hard drive? Well, no, not really. It's recommended, but you don't need to if your Mac system has plenty of space to spare, if the hard drive is, well, you know, depending on what kind of hard drive it is and how much space you have, you might not need an external hard drive at all. For the process of backing up your system, yeah, you're going to need an external hard drive because you're trying to save the entire contents of your Mac somewhere else in case the worst happens. The hard drive inside your Mac dies or something else dies and you're not going to have immediate access to the contents of the hard drive or they're just gone because the hard drive just, you know, gave up the ghost. And so backing up your system using Time Machine or some other options allows you the ability to, let's say the hard drive dies on my Mac, I can buy a new hard drive and then restore the contents of my Time Machine backup to the new hard drive as if, you know, that was the hard drive the entire time. And that's really helpful. Or you might want the ability to boot up from an external hard drive. So let's say that the hard drive on this Mac dies, kicks the can and you know, it's right before a recording project, which has happened to me before. I The cable that connects the hard drive to the rest of the Mac at that time, I had a different, I had a MacBook and that cable just died. The hard drive was still okay. I just couldn't access the hard drive. So thankfully using a third-party option called Carbon Copy Cloner, which I'll show you in this video, I was able to boot up from an external copy or clone that I had saved of the entire contents of my Mac onto that other hard drive, just boot it up from the external hard drive and just went on with the recording session as if nothing had happened at all, despite the fact that I knew something had happened. Unfortunately, Time Machine cannot create bootable clones or backups. It can only create restorative options. So you have to have the OS running on a hard drive somewhere so you can restore from an earlier save state of your Mac's system. But with Carbon Copy Cloner, you can actually create, you know, this bootable backup so you can just load your Mac up from any hard drive that you can connect to your Mac. 
And in fact, if we just bring up Safari right now, I'll, I'll show you right now. This is Carbon Copy Cloner, and it allows you to save, you know, different states of your system or just folders on your system and not the entire hard drive. But you can save it to external hard drives, et cetera, and then you can boot up from those snapshots or those versions. And you can see right up here that it's all ready to go with Big Sur. I highly recommend Carbon Copy Cloner. It's saved me a number of times. Now, I'm just going to minimize this for now. Then lastly, our bucket for archiving. And yeah, you're typically going to want an external hard drive, even more than one external hard drive for the process of archiving, which again is projects or files that are deemed complete that you don't need immediate access to, but you know, you would love to have immediate access to just in case you got to get something from them. And also you want to make sure that they're safe because if the external hard drive that's holding all of your archives dies, well, now you've lost a lifetime of work and that's not really good either. And in fact, let me pull up this image right here. And you can see here, that I have a variety of hard drives. These were my first ones. These were just like stuff you could buy at Best Buy. They're just consumer grade external hard drives. And then, you know, I graduated and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight hard drives for external purposes of archiving, backing up, et cetera. It's, it's obscene. And I've actually changed my archiving process because I'm tired of buying hard drives every year. But this one is four terabytes. These two are each four terabytes. This is two, one, 750 gigs. And this is just an old Mac hard drive that I put in an enclosure so I could access it but it used to be in an old Mac. And typically for the process of archiving, you wanna save your archive files in not one, not two, but three individual places. So typically this would be two physical hard drives in your studio or in your immediate vicinity and one cloud option. And I'm gonna post a video in the coming weeks of my archiving process that I've just switched over to. Hopefully that'll help you out because you, know, you don't wanna end up like this. You don't wanna end up with millions of drives and trying to make sure to copy everything exactly the same between them. So next up, we need to decide which hard drive should you get if you're going to get an external hard drive. Should you get a hard disk drive, HDD, the one that we're all pretty much used to, or an SSD or solid state drive? Because each one has their pros and cons. And if we just open up Safari here, I have here, this is an HDD. This is the one that we're all used to. It is a mechanical drive. The disk spins or the platter spins. And then there's an arm that writes the information to the disk. So it's magnetically transferred onto the disk. Whereas we could use a solid state drive, which there are no moving parts. These are just cells and the information, you know, is just saved across the flash storage. And they're both great for different reasons. And they're both lacking for different reasons. For HDDs, basically, this is typically the recommended external hard drive. You want to look for a 7200 RPM HDD. So Stuff that you can buy at Best Buy are typically not going to be 7200 RPM, which stands for revolutions per minute, how fast the disk spins per minute. This is often something you're going to get from like B&H, you know, Pro Video or Sweetwater or Zounds or any place else. Like specifically for professional activities like audio, video, etc. The main benefit of a hard disk drive is that they are super cheap at this point. You can get a ton of storage for next to nothing. And in fact, let me just open this up here. G drive. This is the hard drive that I last bought. It's a four terabyte drive, four terabytes for 150 bucks. And I'm going to compare it against some of the other options for solid state drives. But I mean, that's a ton of space for not a lot of money. The big drawbacks of a hard disk drive is number one, there are moving parts inside the drive. You know, again, if we take a look, because there's mechanical moving parts, these tend to wear out over time. So, you know, you could have a failure just because these things maybe get stuck or, you know, do the thing that machines do, which is break at some point in time. The other drawback of a hard disk drive is that they tend to not be as fast as solid state drives. The transfer or write speed typically is not as fast where a solid state drive is just going to blow, you know, a hard disk drive out of the water. Now, what are the pros of a solid state drive? And, you know, I'm purposefully looking at this G technology stuff, which is a company that is owned by Western Digital. I really like the G technology stuff. Western Digital has done well for me. Through the years, in fact, if we take a look at that photo again, these consumer grade devices are Western digital. And, you know, I bought this like 10 plus years ago and it's still running. And it's a mechanical drive. So I don't know. They've done really well by me and I really like the G Tech stuff. Let's open Safari again. So the main benefits of a solid state drive 
is that it's incredibly fast. It transfers and reads information very, very quickly, much faster than a hard disk drive. And there's no moving parts, so you don't have to worry about the parts wearing out over time. I mean, really, it's just the speed is the big benefit. The cons of a solid state drive, number one is the cost. I mean, if we take a look right here, this is a one terabyte drive and I own this drive. It's actually my Mac system. Instead of using the internal drive on my Mac, I use this as the internal drive because the internal one is a 5,400 RPM drive. It's one terabyte, but slow as molasses. So I just, I don't have the ability to crack open the iMac. I don't feel comfortable opening my iMac and swapping the hard drive inside. So instead I have an external hard drive that I've just, I run the OS and everything off of. But this is 180 bucks for a terabyte versus this guy here, which was four terabytes for 150 bucks. So that's a massive difference. The other con potentially of solid state drives is that there's actually a built-in expiration date on solid state drives. Solid state drives, um, they wear out over time every time you're writing information to them. And, you know, these things have been optimized to last a very long time. Don't let me scare you into thinking that, you know, you're going to buy a solid state drive and it's going to die tomorrow. But there is an expectation that at some point, the cells are going to wear out from being written to over and over again, and it's going to stop working. And, you know, either one could potentially die on you. The benefit of a hard disk drive over a solid state drive is that if a solid state drive dies, it's much harder to retrieve that information through, you know, professional means where a hard disk drive, it's a little easier. That's the caveat. But again, these systems have been optimized to write again and again. And there's plenty of research that you can do online that demonstrates that solid state drives will last you a very, very, very long time. But I do recommend any hard drive that you're looking at purchasing, whether it be solid state drive or hard disk drive, you want to make sure it's for professional purposes like audio and video. You don't want to just pick up the cheapest thing that you can find on Amazon or Best Buy. It's not going to serve you well over, you know, over your working history. So we've covered hard disk drives versus solid state drives. One is much faster than the other, while one is much cheaper than the other. But then we also got to consider transfer write speeds. And this is not just dependent on hard disk drive versus solid state drive. It's also dependent on the connection type into your Mac, how you're connecting these things to your Mac. Let's take a look. So right here, you know, we have a hard disk drive and it transfers at 195 megabytes per second, which is not terrible. You know, it connects via USB-C. So, you know, not, not too bad. If we take a look at the solid state drive, this transfers at 560 megabytes per second. And this also connects via USB-C. So, okay, that's not looking too bad or USB 3.1. But now let's take a look at another option from GTEC. And this one is called the G Drive Mobile Pro SSD, and this transfers at 2,800 megabytes per second, which is obviously fantastic. But for the price, for the same one terabyte, it's almost 400 bucks. Pretty expensive. And this connects via Thunderbolt 3. So that's what you're dealing with. You're not just dealing with, is it a spinning drive versus a flash drive and one being faster than the other, but how are these things being connected to your Mac also makes a big difference. But again, do you really need an external hard drive? Is it really applicable to your situation? It all depends on your system. So let's say your Mac has an internal hard drive that holds at a maximum 500 gigs. It's also a spinning drive, so a hard disk drive, and it spins at 5,400 RPM. So 5,400 times per minute. I'm going to recommend that you probably get an external hard drive just because that thing is going to be slow and you're going to max it out pretty quickly. However, if you have a Mac with a six terabyte hard drive, which, you know, you probably spend a ton of money to get that. And it's also a solid state drive, so big bucks. No, probably not. You can probably just save everything to the internal hard drive on your Mac just for the purposes of working on your logic projects day in and day out, not talking about backing up or archiving. Okay, with all that said and done, what would be the recommended setup for the worst case scenario? You have an internal drive that is just slow as molasses. It's got no space and you're running into system overloads and just sluggish activity from your Mac? Well, I recommend twofold. Number one, if you have the ability, the wherewithal, I would replace the internal spinning drive on the Mac with a solid state drive. And you could probably get away with a terabyte. This is going to run the OS. It's going to run your apps. It's going to run logic. It's going to run, you know, just everything except for saving your logic projects. And that's going to just, that is going to get you so much more speed, a much better user experience. 
And, you know, I would even go for that over memory, but I'm sure somebody will definitely tell me that I'm wrong in that territory. But I would go with that first because I run, you know, eight gigs of memory or, you know, for a long time now and I haven't had too many problems. But going from a hard disk drive to an SSD internally in the Mac, that's made a world of difference. For an external hard drive, I would go with a 7200 RPM hard disk drive. You could probably go with solid state drive because it would be super fast and awesome, but you're going to get the most bang for your buck in terms of the amount of space available to you for how much you're going to spend for it. And 7200 RPM is standard in audio, and it's going to get you plenty of space. It's going to get you plenty of speed for reading and writing your logic projects. There's also the question, should you save your software instruments, your loops, many other things to the external hard drive as well? Because that's often recommended. I think it all depends. I save all of my Logic sounds and included instruments just to the internal hard drive. You know, remember, I have this hard drive here that runs internally, but really it's just plugged in via USB. I save all of that stuff from Logic to the internal hard drive where everything else like contact or anything else like that, I would save to the external hard drive just so you don't end up filling up your one terabyte SSD inside your Mac super quick. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.